Welcome to part 9 in this UNET tutorial series. And in this video, I'm going to implement health and damage. So straight away, I'll make a new C sharp script uh, called player health. I'll give that a capital health. All right. And open it up. So using unity engine dot uh, networking and also using unity engine dot UI. I'm going to print uh, the health to a text on the screen. And of course, this has to derive from network behavior. All right. And as for variables, I want a, a sync var, which I will call um, private int health. All right. And I'll give it a starting value of 100. Next, um, uh, I guess I need a reference for that uh, text a GUI element. So I'll call it a text, private text, health text. Okay. And I guess I should go ahead and make that. Uh, so if I go to my main scene, uh, go to my canvas, I'll create a uh, new uh, UI element, which I will call a text, I will uh, reposition it to the to the lower right. Okay. Um, let me see also set the pivot there. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So that way when the screen resizes, it should move with the screen. Yes, it does. So no, that's all good. All right. And then I'll set on best fit. And to help me out, I'll just I'll just write here health, so that I know that that's what it's for. And I'll rename this to uh, health text. And I'll copy that name. Come back to the script. And in my start function, I'll uh, set the reference to it. So health text is equal to a uh, game object dot find. Which game object is that? It is the health text dot get component. And I'm getting the uh, text component. All right, then. All right. Uh, next thing. Well, obviously, I need to set that health um, when the player uh, is, of course, uh, spawned into the game, of course, their health value needs to get uh, entered into that text field. So I'm going to make a function for that. In the meantime, it's just empty. I mean, it doesn't exist rather set health text. Okay. And I need to make this a uh, function. Um, so let me think about it. So I should, I guess, void a set health text. Um, now, who should be setting the health text? Of course, only only the local player. So I'm going to say if is local player, uh, then then in that case, uh, health text dot text is equal to uh, I'll write here health and leave a little space plus health dot two string. All right. So that should print that to the screen. Um, let me think now. What else do I need to do? Of course, uh, if you recall, and I should just remember to attach uh, the script to the player, I will do that right now, otherwise I will forget. And uh, I'll just come back here and drop in the player health. Okay, so remember in the player shoot script, I'll come back to that. In fact, there's the message there, the variable go is assigned to, but its value is never used. Uh, here, I wanted to, in the player shoot script, apply damage to that player. So, of course, I need some sort of public function back in the player health script uh, to do that. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, um, I guess, uh, public void deduct health, maybe I could do, maybe something like that. Public void deduct health, all right? And um, it'll be int, and I'll say dmg, meaning damage. And then all I'll say is that health is uh, minus equal damage. So the uh, damage value is subtracted from the health. Coming back to player shoot, uh, I guess now I need to uh, call that function. Uh, so I would do that on the, um, I guess on the player, right? So the player that I found. So I would say uh, go dot get component. Uh, what am I getting? I'm getting the player health. And what am I doing? I'm going to access that function. And what was that uh, function called? It was called deduct health. And I want to deduct it by the amount damage. Okay. So 
so that should do that. And uh, there's one other thing. I previously had this as a float. I'm going to change it to an int. Yeah, something that I have been doing that's not so efficient is that, see, floats are very large values. They have decimal places and then lots of figures after the decimal place. Uh, so they take up more, I guess they take up more bandwidth when you send them, when you sync them across the network. Ints, on the other hand, uh, take up less space. So uh, I suppose I should try to use ints wherever possible. Okay, coming back. Um, so I think that would work at the moment. In fact, uh, the health would get uh, printed to the screen. Uh, so why don't I just try that? Uh, first of all, go back to my, um, oh, well, apply the change to the player prefab, then get rid of it. Okay, then come back to the uh, menu scene, save, and uh, just give that a try. Okay, so the health value gets printed correctly. Oh, then, well, that's good. Okay, so with that working, um, okay, let me think, what do I need to do next? So I've got my health there, of course. I need that health uh, text to um, get updated, right? Uh, whenever, uh, whenever the value changes. So a, a good way to do that probably would be to make a hook function here with the sync bar. So whenever the server sends the uh, latest uh, health values to uh, the player, uh, to the clients, then uh, this hook function will be run. Uh, I guess something else to note, coming back to the player shoot function, see the deduction of health only happens on the server. So once it's happened on the server, I'm using the sync var to then keep that health value uh, to update it across the network and all the clients. So I guess once they uh, know that it's changed, so this is where I could use a hook function and call this one on health. Assuming I've spelled that correctly, on health change, and it looks all right, on health changed. Um, okay, so now I need to make a, a function for that. So uh, I'll say void on health changed. The input is uh, int, and I'll just call it int um, hlth, I guess. And um, of course, on the client, I then need to set the health value to equal to that hlth. Otherwise, it won't get updated. Now that I'm using a hook function, just remember, once you use a hook function, this value, this variable, is not going to get automatically updated. You need to update it in the hook function. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to set the health text, right? And I would say, I would say, uh, pretty much um, that is going to work. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing. I don't think so. So uh, I think I should go ahead and uh, run it. So that's all saved, which is good. Uh, I'll build and run. All right, and I'm in the game. Now if I shoot, yep, let's see what the, oh, yep, there we go. See, the health is 50 now. Right, now let me uh, come here. I have to get the cursor, so I'm over here. I have to get the cursor, the mouse cursor inside the window, otherwise it'll unselect it. Okay, I shoot, there we go. I can see the health value of the uh, player dropping. So of course I can keep shooting and the health will go far into the negative. So of course I need some way to destroy the players. Of course I need to destroy the players um, after they've been shooting at each other. Once the health goes to zero, then of course the player should be destroyed. And then I need of course a, a method to respawn the player as well. Well, just logically, right? Okay, so uh, that's it. I think uh, I think that's enough for this video. Except I will just get rid of that uh, debug.log statement that's back in the shoot uh, area. I don't need that anymore. It's good. I know it works. Okay, so that's enough for this video. I guess in the next video I'll get on to, uh, I guess, disabling the player. I don't think I'll destroy the player. I think I'll just disable them. Anyway, that's for the next video. Thanks for watching.